Welcome back. Well, we may have enjoyed a warmer winter than usual, but it could lead to an increase in the tick population, which in turn leaves us at more risk to contract Lyme disease. Joining us now with advice on how to protect yourself and your loved ones against this awful, painful condition uh, is Dr. Tony Thompson Chittams, Director of TLC Pediatrics in Bowie, Maryland. Thank you so much for uh, coming in on this Memorial Day. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You know, I was reading too, I thought was interesting um, that children specifically are more prone to this or having Lyme disease. Why is that? Well, children are more prone, of course, because they are, you know, in this developmental stage that they're interested in their surroundings and they love to get out and they play. Mm -hmm. And so they're, you know, are very adventurous in the woods, you know, in areas where ticks are more prevalent. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. Do all ticks, not all ticks carry Lyme disease? I mean, how, you know, if you have one, I mean, it it doesn't mean you're going to get it. That is okay. absolutely correct. All, uh, all, all ticks do not carry Lyme disease. The ticks that are very infectious with Lyme disease are your nymph deer ticks. They are very infectious with this bacteria. So you're absolutely right. All ticks do not carry Lyme disease. Now, Orsa, I know you have some pictures here. Do some of these show the type of ticks that you need to be worried about? Yes, they do. This one, particularly in the front, shows the different developmental stages this of, right yes, okay. of uh, a deer tick. And it's a small tick that I just recently removed from a child about two weeks ago. Mm. And it is definitely a nymph deer tick. And that tick is truly highly infectious with the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. And that bacteria is called Borrelium burgdorferi. Okay, so what people at home really wanna know, obviously, are what are the symptoms of Lyme disease? When should you be concerned? Absolutely, well, Lyme disease occurs in stages. So a child may present with fever fatigue and this characteristic rash known as erythema migrans. And when you see it, it looks like a bullseye. Um, and sometimes children are unaware that it's there, but we know that that is characteristic for Lyme disease. And we treat. If this stage is left undiagnosed, uh, a child can present with fever, fatigue, joint pain, particularly of the knees. The worst case scenario of meningitis is headaches, fever, stiff neck, meningitis. It certainly can affect the heart as well. And it gets worse. It doesn't like it doesn't get better on its own without treatment. Exactly. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about treatment. I mean, if you catch it early, I, I assume the the better. But what kind of treatment is out there uh, for kids, adults, anybody that would come down with this? It is a disease that's definitely treatable, mm -hmm. and we, depending on the stage of the disease, we use a course of antibiotics. Of course, if it's in the early stage, the course of antibiotics is not as long as compared as if you're in the later stage. The course of antibiotics may be a little longer. And what we're seeing on our screen right now is how to remove a tick. That's the thing, if you have one, those pesky things really get in to your skin. What's the best process to remove them? Well, the best process to really remove a tick is take some blunt forceps, go to the base of the skin, and apply slow, steady upward traction. Don't twist, don't crush the tick. Mm -hmm. um, we used to think that we could use the, suff the suffocation technique where mm -hmm. we would put Vaseline on a tick or alcohol, but the interesting thing about ticks, they take three to 15 breaths per hour. So mm -hmm. that may or may not work. So the best way to remove a tick is take those forceps and apply slow upward traction. Now, is there concern too, because I know they can really get lodged in there um, when you do pull them out to, of leaving anything behind, and if so, you just kind of clean the area? Is that the best well, way? Well, you, you can try to remove it, but if you can't, don't worry. Just clean the area with a good antiseptic and, and just watch. If Lyme disease is going to occur, it usually occur three to 30 days after the tick has been mm -hmm. attached. And the first sign, of course, is that characteristic rash. Okay, and also something, obviously our pets as well, something we have to worry about. Same kind of technique with them as well. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely, and you should check your pets for mm -hmm. ticks. And talk to the veterinarian about, in terms of what insect repellent that you should use for them as well. Mm -hmm. And that's the other key. If your kids are going outside, there's insect repellents that can repel these ticks and try to keep them off. Exactly, Okay. exactly. Well, Tony Thompson, thank you so much for coming in today. We appreciate it. It's uh, definitely something you have to think about in these summer months when we're all outside playing. Thank you. All right, thank over you to you, very much. Allison.
Sarah, thanks. Up next, it's a sound that signals the start of Memorial Day weekend. The Fox 5 Weather App. Look 10 days ahead or hour by hour. View today's video forecast and radar that can pinpoint your neighborhood free at your App Store or Android Market.